I'd like to talk to you now about uh, some of our work um, that I've been doing in conjunction with uh, Young Bay, who's an acupuncturist. Uh, Young is actually an interesting chap. He was going to be here today, but was unable to. Uh, he's not only an acupuncturist, but he actually also has a PhD in high energy physics from UC Berkeley. So that's, uh, I don't know many acupuncturists that are high energy physicists and acupuncturists too. But uh, show you some of, the, some of our work that's been ongoing for a number of years uh, with, uh, with acupuncture. Uh, acupuncture, as you well know, is a major component of oriental medicine, but it's been very difficult to reconcile with medicine, with bio, uh, Western medicine and biomedicine, um, uh, because uh, oriental medicine more or less energy-based, uh, Western medicine more molecular-based. But in spite of all of that, there are certainly a number of documented correlates with acupuncture, looking at nerve pathway activation, release of neurotransmitters and hormones, and a variety of other activities. Our initial study with acupuncture goes back to 1996-1998, just to give you a little bit of history here, in which uh, we looked at correlations between specific brain cortices and corresponding acupoint stimulation. The classical functional magnetic resonance imaging experiment you do is to stimulate the visual cortex by light flashes. So someone's in an fMRI device, you turn on flashing lights, visual cortex lights up. We repeated those same experiments except no flashing lights. We blindfolded the subject. We had the acupuncturist stimulate BL67, an acupuncture point in the foot related to vision, and the, the visual cortex lights up. Uh, here are some fMRI images, the one on the left. Uh, the individual is uh, looking at flashing lights and the visual cortex lights up. The uh, center uh, B uh, slide is um, the same individual, blindfolded, uh, acupuncture stimulation of BL67, acupuncture point in foot related vision, visual cortex lights up. And now let's move the acupuncture needle to a non-acupuncture site, stimulate a non-acupuncture site, and what you see in the brain is just noise. Uh, these findings were published back in 1998 in Proceedings of the National Academy. Uh, we continued on this work using ultrasound to really determine the feasibility of using ultrasound to at first stimulate acupuncture sites and then to actually image these acupuncture sites as well. Uh, the ultrasound parameters that we used for the stimulation were based on work that we had done previously. Uh, and just very quickly, we used a focused transducer operating at five megahertz, highly focused, uh, working in intensity levels between five to eight uh, watts per square centimeter. Uh, the ultrasound stimulation was applied to this acupuncture point, the 067 vision-related acupuncture point, and it turns out that the ultrasound stimulation is actually indistinguishable from applying a needle to that same acupuncture point. It also turns out that a wide range of ultrasound parameters could produce the simulation, but lower levels of ultrasound, those below about five watts per square centimeter, would not produce a simulation. By the way, these ultrasound levels are uh, above those that are used diagnostically, but below those that are known to produce any kind of deleterious effects. We moved on to try to image acupuncture points, and conventional imaging, conventional ultrasound imaging, failed miserably, operating at 3.5, 7.5, 10 megahertz. Typical ultrasound imaging device, is, uh, imaging of acupuncture points was really unremarkable. We understand why, but uh, uh, due to the fact that uh, acupuncture points appear to have the same reflectivity as the surrounding tissue. However, measurements at somewhat higher frequencies, 50 megahertz center frequencies, showed the uh, enhanced ultrasound attenuation through an acupuncture point. And without going into any kind of uh, details, let me just uh, suffice it to say, given the time constraints, that the slide at the top is kind of a reflected signal through soft tissue. Uh, these, are, these are 11 millimeters in depth. And moving over to an acupuncture site, what we see is enhanced attenuation over that acupuncture site, uh, highly distinguished from just normal soft tissue. This, in fact, led us to develop a data acquisition system operating at 50 megahertz uh, in which we digitize the reflected signals, 
we refer to those as A-lines, send out a pulse of ultrasound, look at the reflections that come back. That's known as an A-line. We recorded a two-dimensional grid of these A-lines uh, and then calculated using some signal processing techniques that we had developed years ago in our lab along each line to measure the attenuation of each acupuncture point and then to reconstruct that. And here is what a, this BL67 actually looks like. Uh, the, the top of the skin is up here, uh, scales here in millimeters, three-dimensionally, and what, what you see are basically foci of constant attenuation or elasticity uh, defining that acupuncture point. And uh, with a little visualization or if I take off my glasses, it actually, actually looks like a three-dimensional acupuncture point. And maybe if your vision is as bad as mine, you can take off your glasses and it'll look much better. But I'll show you some images later that are actually much, much better than this. Curiously enough, these acupuncture points don't stay in the same place. They move around. This is a typical size of the acupuncture point. Uh, this is in a particular individual of a 12-day period. And notice you start out here, and over 12 days, the acupuncture point comes out over here. And this process is actually, it turns out, well known to many, uh, many acupuncturists. I was a little surprised uh, to find this out. But the acupuncture points do actually change in size and shape over time, and they move around a little bit. Uh, well, a summary so far, acupuncture points correspond to regions of enhanced elasticity, increased ultrasound attenuation. They change in size, shape, and even location over short periods of time. And using quantitative ultrasound methods, we can actually image these acupuncture points. And ultrasound at higher intensities can actually stimulate those points. A uh, couple of references. We first reported on this uh, at the uh, uh, 20th annual meeting uh, back in La Jolla in 2001 and some ad additional work at the meeting at University of Virginia in 2002. And this was also published uh, 2004 in medical acupuncture and in acoustical imaging. The objectives of the ongoing study and what I'd really like to talk to you about today is to obtain ultrasound attenuation images of acupuncture points during the stimulation of those points and also to investigate communication between acupuncture points along the same uh, meridian. Uh, here we built a new data acquisition system that was a, actually a 50 megahertz transducer array. It's 10 by 10 elements. Each element uh, uh, is about a uh, uh, two-tenths of a millimeter square. Uh, operating center frequencies of 50 megahertz. So it's a 10 by 10 array, so it means 100 elements. Uh, we're going to record these individual A lines from each transducer, digitized them at 200 megahertz, and we're going to fire each one of these 100 elements at the same time. Record the information and then uh, put together the data to reconstruct an attenuation image or elasticity image of the acupuncture points. Now, each element of this array is connected to a separate pulse and receiver so if you come into our lab, you'll see a rack of 100 PCs. Uh, it's kind of brute force, but it does work. Actually, we have 101 PCs uh, because one PC basically controls the process, and the other 100 PCs uh, record the data from each uh, one of these uh, elements in the array. Each PC has about 5 gigabytes of fast memory, and so in about 3 seconds when we turn this thing on, we record about a half a terabyte of data. So uh, this will keep graduate students busy for long periods of time. Uh, and in fact, the, the images that I'm going to show you are, are sort of jumpy. They don't move smoothly. And they don't smooth, move, move smoothly because of the limited number of graduate students I have to work on this stuff. <laughs> OK, here's what an acupuncture point looks like. This is BL67. This is about a millimeter or so in dimension here. And now let's see what happens when you actually stimulate that acupuncture point. Uh, top of the skin is here. We're about uh, three millimeters in depth from the skin. Let's see what happens when we actually stimulate this acupuncture point. You get the same thing whether it's a needle or a pulse of ultrasound. The point actually twists around the needle. It's actually twisting around the needle as you stimulate. Now, the acupuncture point that we're stimulating is BL67 in the foot here. And now what I'd like to do is stimulate this acupuncture point and then let's take our imaging device and look at acupuncture points along 